Hey gang and welcome to your very first step in becoming a Dino Ninja. Okay then, so no doubt you've already been swept away in the current whirlwind of hype about the new kid on the block, Dino, which is quite quickly being touted as a complete replacement to Node, and that now Node is dead. Now that's not true, Node is going to be around for a long, long time, but Dino does look promising and fun to work with, and to be honest, anything which uses a dinosaur in its logo has my immediate attention. Now incidentally, I would strongly advise that you have a decent grasp of Node.js and Express apps before you watch these videos, because I will be drawing comparisons throughout this series between them. Now, if you want to learn about Node and Express, I've got a tutorial series on this very channel all about that, and I'll leave the link to that down below. All right then, so first things first, what is Dino exactly? Well, Dino is a JavaScript and TypeScript runtime, and it uses the same V8 engine as Node does under the hood, which allows us to run JavaScript on a computer. And in many ways, it's very much the same kind of thing as Node.js, which is no surprise considering it's built by the same person who brought us Node in the first place, Ryan Dahl. And the reason behind creating this new alternative to Node was that he regretted some of the things that he did with Node and felt that he could improve on them. And that's probably a sentiment shared with most developers at some point in their career. So we're still going to be using Dino to do all of the same kind of things we currently use Node to do, but there are some noticeable differences and what seem to be possible improvements to it. So in this video, I just want to outline a few of the main ones. So first of all, it works with TypeScript out of the box. There is a compiler built into Dino and there's no need for any further setup or tooling. Dino processes our TypeScript for us automatically into JavaScript, which is great. And we're gonna see that later on. Secondly, it's secure by default, unlike Node.js, which isn't. And that means that you'll need to manually allow permissions for scripts to access things like your file system or network. Now you do this by adding flags to your run commands in the terminal. And that's good because it means that it's much harder for malicious code to manipulate your file system or access parts of your computer without you knowing. Again, Node isn't secure by default, so you didn't need to do this when you used Node. It also uses the more modern ES6 module standard for importing and exporting rather than the older CommonJS one, something that's also actually recently been added to Node as well, but only very recently, and Dino is using this from the offset. It also utilizes current web standards, and that means that you get access to a lot of web APIs out of the box, such as the Fetch API, and that means you also don't have to rely on third-party packages to implement those features in your app. And that's good news for front-end devs because it means more code can be shared between the front and the back. Now, in addition, it brings to the table an official standard library, which is just a bunch of commonly used modules or packages. And they're maintained by Dino themselves and not third parties, which could at some point bin the module or package at any time. So these modules are guaranteed to work with Dino and they're going to be actively maintained by the Dino team so we can steadfastly rely on them. Now, speaking of packages, they are not installed via NPM and we don't use a package.json file either. In Dino, package management is decentralized, meaning that we can install packages which are hosted anywhere on the web. And the way we do that is just by using import statements in our code, which we'll see later on. That downloads them onto our computer and it caches them so that it's not re-downloaded every time we run the script, but it doesn't bundle them up into a node modules folder either. So that's the gist of what Dino is bringing to the table at the moment, but it's still in its very early days and it is likely to change over the coming weeks, months and years. Likewise, the ecosystem built around Dino is developing too, so there's likely to be some bugs, problems, and hiccups along the way. And some of the modules in Dino are still marked as unstable, meaning they could change. And for these reasons, I would probably not recommend ditching Node anytime soon. It already has a vast community and support network around it, and it's gonna be around for a long, long time in my opinion. So I guess don't think of Dino as a shiny new replacement for Node. Think of it as a younger brother or sister to Node, which could potentially grow into a more rounded person. But I guess time will tell. So anyway, in this series, I'm not going to be going too deeply into Dino or trying to put together some complete Dino course because I think it's a little early to be doing that. 
but I will get you up and running. I'm gonna showcase some of the main differences to Node and even build a little Dino API at the end. Now in this course, I'm gonna be using TypeScript along the way instead of JavaScript since Dino can handle that. Now you don't have to do that, you can use JavaScript instead, the code is going to be quite similar, but if you want to learn TypeScript first, feel free to check out my TypeScript tutorial series on this channel, the link is going to be down below. And like I said earlier, you should also have at least a basic understanding of Node.js and Express first of all, because I am going to be comparing Dino to Node as we go forward. Now I've got a whole course on Node if you want to get started with that first of all, and to be honest, if you're new to backend, I would always suggest learning Node before Dino regardless, because at the moment it's much more relevant. And finally, I'm going to be using VS Code to work with in this series, which you can find at vscode.com and download it there if you want to follow along exactly as I do. I've also created course files for every single lesson in this tutorial series, and you can find those at this GitHub repo right here, Dino Jumpstart, so that link is going to be right down below. And I've created a different branch for every lesson, because obviously every lesson has different code. So if you want to see the code for a particular lesson, for example, lesson four, you'd select the lesson four branch, and you're going to see all the code right here. Okay then, so now let's install Dino on our computer and see how to use it. So if we just scroll down the homepage, we're gonna see the installation instructions right here. And there's a different command to run dependent on whether you're using Windows, Linux, or Mac. I'm on Windows recording this, so I'm gonna use Chocolatey to install Dino. Now, Chocolatey is basically a package manager for Windows. And if you don't have it and you're on Windows, I would recommend downloading it. Now you can check out the installation instructions right here. I'm gonna leave this link down below, dead simple. So anyway, I'm gonna grab this thing right here, which says Choco install Dino, and I'm gonna open up CMD and run it as administrator, and I'm gonna paste in that command. You press enter now to install this. Now it's not gonna reinstall it for me, I already have it installed. So it's gonna install it for you, and then you can use the Dino command right here and press enter. And that is going to start up the Dino REPL where we can directly write JavaScript code right here. And by the way, a REPL is just an interactive programming environment like this. It takes a user input, it reads and evaluates that, and then it returns a result to us. So for example, I could write const name is equal to Mario and press enter. Then if I try to get that name, it's gonna give me the value of Mario. Likewise, I could do sums like five plus 10, and that is 15. So now Dino is installed, but we don't always wanna write our code directly in a terminal like this. So now let's have a look at how we can create JavaScript or TypeScript files and run those directly through Dino. So then my friends, I've opened up Visual Studio Code inside this directory, Dino Jumpstart, and I'm going to create a new file first of all called test.js. So we'll create a JavaScript file and run that through Dino first of all, then I'll show you the same thing with a TypeScript file. So I'm going to keep this really simple, I'm just going to declare a constant called name and set it equal to Yoshi, and then all I'll do is log that to the console down here, so console.log and then the name. Alright, so now I want to run this file through Dino. How do I do that? Dead simple. Down in the terminal, I'm going to say Dino, and make sure you're in the correct directory where the file is. So Dino, and then run, and then the file name. So in this case, test.js. Press enter, it runs the file, and we can see that this has worked because we see Yoshi down here in the terminal. All right, cool. So now let's do the same thing, but this time let's do a TypeScript file. So test.ts. Because remember, Dino can also run TypeScript files, and it compiles it when you try to run it. So let me now say let name, which is going to be a string. And then down here, I'm going to say name is equal to Mario. And then down below that, I'll say console.log, oops, console.log name. Okay, so this I've just done to demonstrate that we're using a bit of TypeScript type syntax. And then down here, I'm gonna do the same thing, Dino run test and this time .ts. So press enter and notice this time we get this compile thing first of all, and that's Dino telling us it's compiling this file into JavaScript first of all, and then it's running that JavaScript on our computer, okay? So again, we see the result right here, Mario. 
Now, as well as running local files on our computer, we can also run files which are out there on the internet somewhere. So for example, if we bring across the Dino homepage, if you scroll down a bit, you're gonna see this getting started guide and you can see right here, it says Dino run and then this file right here and it's hosted on the web. So if I just copy that or rather go to this address, we're gonna see it's this file right here, just a simple console log. Now, if I grab this right here and try to run this, let me just move this out of the way again. If I paste this command down here, oops, we need to say Dino run, first of all, then whatever the URL is of the file, press enter, and we can see down here, welcome to Dino. So that is running this file over here, right here. Okay, so we can do that in Dino. We can run files from the web. Now, I also want to mention a package that gives Dino support to VS Code. And without it, VS Code might show some errors, especially when you're trying to import modules later on. So let me just show you this package. If I go down here, it's called Dino right here. So just search for Dino and install this one right here. So then, so far, all of this behavior is pretty similar to Node, with the exception of running TypeScript directly. We're still basically running our code through Dino and the V8 engine so that we can write JavaScript and now TypeScript directly on our computer. So in the next lesson, we'll start to look a little bit more at what Dino can do. And we'll also start to see some of the differences between Dino and Node.